Greetings and salutations, folks, and welcome once again, as always, to another helping of Mr. H's Hot Pot. You join me today on my old midden, so to speak. I'm currently in the Wigan area, and I'm not too far away from my old stomping ground, Lawrence. I'm actually in the next village, which is Springview. I'm currently on Taylor's Lane Bridge. Below me is the West Coast Main Line, and I'll just whip the camera around. In the distance though, you can see what's left of Springs Branch railway sheds, which have been there for donkey's years. Now, that will give you a clue as to the subject matter of today's video. Because the area that I'm currently making my way to is now a local nature reserve. But way back when, it used to be covered in railway lines and rail sardines and all that kind of good stuff. It was an arve of industry, especially with nearby Ince Moss Colliery being not too far away to provide coal for all the steam engines that would have run in this area. And today, Hot Potters, we're going to be taking a look at the remains and relics of the railway lines and sardines that used to be in this area. Now, there was two companies in this area, pre-nationalisation, uh, pre should I say, to British Rail. First of all, there was the LMS, which is those traction sheds I've just shown you, the London Midland and Scottish Railway. And then there was also the Lancashire Union Railway. There was a smaller concern. And it's the remains and relics that we're going to be taking a look at today, which will be all in this wooded area here. Now today, the area has been flooded and it's fisheries, it's Springview fisheries. And people come here, and obviously they do a little bit of fishing and get away from the wharf and that kind of stuff. I'm sure that's what fishermen do really, if they'll be honest. But uh, if you like fishing, put a comment below as to why you do it and see if my theory is correct. Now, as I say, there's one or two little relics in this area. I do remember them from my childhood. However, that was what, 40 years ago now, so they may not be here, they may not be here. One relic that I do know is still here is the remains of an old railway bridge and that's what we're going to be taking a look at first. So I'm going to whip the camera around now because I'm approaching it and we'll take a look at the remains of this old railway bridge. And if memory serves me correctly, the remains of this old railway bridge stroke tunnel should just be up this path here. Quite a bit of trees and undergrowth vegetation all that kind of good stuff has sprang up since mr h was last here yeah i can just see it poking out though it's still here and if i remember rightly it was built from brick and then faced off with stone and just up there and over that bridge would have been the course of the old Lancashire Union Railway. See if I can get a bit closer for you. Quite a few brambles and things here to snag my feet up. That's the remains of the first work and it's still good to this day. And this gives you a better view of it. Just get in here. I'm surprised somebody's not been down here and had all this because the price of stone is quite expensive right then upwards and onwards And this is the top side of this area. As you can see, those are the engineering bricks that lay behind that beautiful stonework. I 
I'll tell you something up Potters as a young Mr. H I've sat on there a few times and this is the view from above fur will fall that so I don't want to get too close to the edge we're going to make our way down the other side and this is a view of that railway bridge from the other side which is probably a bit better it's not got as much brambles and things on this side built with four curves so it would have looked rather grand this back in the day and this is where you would have been able to come down once that's where we was up there and this is where at one time you would have been able to get through and when I was a kid you used to be able to get through you can see some large cracks appearing in the face of this structure and if anybody has any idea what these holes are that have been chiselled into the stones please leave a comment below and let me know my theory is that it was put in there so they could lift the blocks up but that's just a guess I'll be honest Doc Potters I've no idea what they're for but yeah at one time steam engines would have thundered across that space and onto the other side this was obviously access into the little sardines and goods area which lie in them woods there just out of shot well up potters I've safely negotiated that former railway embankment and I'm now making my way towards where these sardines would have been and it's amazing to think that all this where I'm now stood would have been a hubbub of a goods yard back in the day uh, if you take a look at some of the old maps which I'll try and put a screenshot in for you now you can see the number of railway lines that there used to be in this area and it was literally littered with them you know so it must have employed quite a few men and women from nearby in Springview and Platte Bridge which is the next village to Springview amazing when you come to think about it now these railway lines my father remembers them when he was a kid he was born in that way back in 1938 so he remembers them as a child in this area and I do remember the remains of the lines being in this wooded area here they have since been lifted I think it was lifted around the 1990s but when it stopped actually being an active railway I've no idea now we may be able to find some of the old sleepers and that in that wooded area with a little bit of luck as I say I do remember the lines running through there and there being buffer stops so what potters I've just made my way into the little wooded area close to where that embankment is that I've just come down near that railway bridge and there are indeed the remains of railway sleepers in here however they're not on the ground it would appear that when they lifted the tracks around this area they came in with an earth moving machine or the JCB as we used to call them when we were kids and just pushed them into a big pile here and on this one that's just sticking up out of the ground you can just make out where the bolts would have gone in the clamp that would have held the rail to them There must have been thousands of these in this area at one time. Shame really is railway sleepers are made from pitch pine and if you have a log burning fire or a coal fire and you put them on they'll burn all night as my uncle used to say. But the railway sardines would have been down there in that cutting. Sadly it would appear that someone is using it to dump tyres in. Probably some rogue garage close by. Mind you, they pay now, don't they, for the disposal of tyres, so you can understand why fly tipping becomes a problem. Anyway, I'll make my way back out of this little wooded area and we'll continue with our bimble. Now what I'm trying to make my way towards is a little gem that's hidden in this wooded area. 
if it's still there. And with a bit of luck, it still will be. Because there's the remains of a building of some description that was attached to these railway lines in this wooded area. It was there when I was a, a kid and a teenager. And from photographs that I've seen of Google Earth, it's still in there somewhere. So with a bit of luck, we'll be able to find it. Now, unfortunately, this area has since become flooded. As do all former railway lines. For some reason, once they stop being active, they just flood and they end up very boggy. However, hot potters, I've come prepared. I've got my Wellingtons on today. So with a bit of luck, I won't get my feet wet. Now, I'm using the old information in my head from when I was a kid, so I could end up wandering around here for quite a while. But with a bit of luck, this building's still in here. If I remember rightly, you had to walk down this path, which I'll show you. And then it, it turns, it sort of goes on a bit of a, a snake bend. Because this leads up to the main line. This is where all the railway vans and that come up where I'm walking. But when they want access onto the railway lines, it's an access point. I can walk on this area, but beyond here there'll be a gate. And that'll stop me going any further. Now, when I was a kid, all of this used to be open. You used to be able to go wherever you wanted. But in this fenced off world that we now live in, as you can see, fences have sprung up. And it just restricts you from going where you want to go. I understand it. Vandalism happens and people go onto the railways with uh, nefarious thoughts, don't they? Theft, vandalism, things like that. You know, but uh, with a bit of luck, it won't be fenced off up here. Anyway, I'm going to cut this little bit here. And join me when we get to the point where I think we'll be able to get in and take a look at this old building from the Lancashire Union Railway. And if we just make our way through here, this should take us into where I think this little gem of a building will be. Assuming, of course, that it's still up. And as you can see with that embankment there, if you follow it, you can clearly see that there's been a railway cutting here at some time. I think there was about two, maybe maybe up to four lines side by side in this cutting. And if we negotiate this little bit of the embankment wall, we should be able to get into where these buildings used to be. And the first remains are in front of you. Just go and take a look at them. And I've no idea what these would have been. I'm imagining that they was perhaps for maintenance of some description. I have absolutely no idea what those concrete beams would have been for back in the day. But, if you're a rail enthusiast and you recognise what those are, please leave a comment below. And at the back of that, it would appear that there's been another brick building. Bit of a train going by though, in the background, just to add a bit of ambience. A lot of Tesco wagons going though. I remember a time when I was a kid it was all coal and a company called Hapag Lloyd that used to go past. Now it's Tesco's, just look at that. That's one hell of a train. Of course every little helps as they say. Right then I'm going to make my way over to that brick structure them we'll take a look at that and see what remains and here we go that appears to be a urinal we'll be able to tell better from the other side but i should imagine 
back in the day that this was a toilet block for the men that were working in these rail sardines let's see if we can get round the front and confirm that that is indeed a urinal yes that's what it is it's an old urinal there are probably a number of those probably about two or three side by side the others have probably long since got smashed and then you would have had a standard toilet for doing number twos wonder how many railway men have pointed Percy at the porcelain on this one amazing to think that this is still here after all this time built from engineering bricks so that would date it probably Victorian era which is when these railways would have been running back end of the Victorian era anyway I'm going to make my way out of this little wooded area now and we'll go and see if we can find the gem of this video so to speak which is that old building so yeah if you've any idea what those concrete beams are behind me near that old ablution block or toilet block as uh, we civvies call them if you have any idea what that is please leave a comment below I'm now carefully making my way through these woods here because there is a lot of debris on the floor mainly fallen branches and that which are just at the right height to make Mr H go bum over pap as we say but with a bit of luck this building should still be here, and it is. It is hot potters, it's still here after all this time. Now, hidden amongst lots of undergrowth, but it's still here. It's been here years, this thing, hot potters. And uh, we'll get a good look at this one in a moment. Hopefully, we can get right up to it. If I remember rightly, it used to have windows in it, the glass long gone, but it had an open side as well you know that you could get into which is what made me think it might be a maintenance shed of some description but uh, I'll just quickly show you the building and then we'll take a look at it and hopefully inside it there it is it's been there this like I say for decades it's been here 40 years that I know of anyway I'll uh, whip the camera around now and let's get a good look at it, shall we? So here we go, Hot Potters. wonder if there's been any further damage done to this since I was last here. As I say, you can faintly see this on Google Earth if you look closely enough. I will put the Google coordinates in for this so anybody who wants to take a look at it for themselves and visit this area can do. Here's where, at one time, you would have had the rain pipe from the roof running down there. You can just see the faint outline where it once sat. Don't recall that being on there when I was a kid. And here we go at Potters. There's the windows. And the door used to be on this side it used to be two and unfortunately they've now since been blocked up someone's come with some cinder blocks or concrete blocks and blocked them up you used to be able to get into this however we can take a look inside and just look at that it looks like somebody's using it as a skip There appears to be an hole in the roof there where that light's coming through don't know what that would have been and all this is precast concrete and it would appear to date from around 1930s 1940s it would have had metal windows in there you'll see the remains of the frame there 
And as I said, I have no idea what this would have been, whether it would have been a canteen or a maintenance shed of some description. Now, if you're wondering where all this rubbish is coming from, it's coming from this fishery here, I should imagine. Now they're bringing it up and throwing it in here rather than disposing of it. However, if someone who uses Springview Fisheries is watching this video and I've got that wrong, please correct me. But it would appear that Network Rail, who now run this area of railway lines, I've put a sign up stating no fly tipping or littering on network rail land so they must still own this area all around here I think this area that I'm currently in is known as Ince Moss Curve or Ince Moss Junction and there we go that's a better view of one of the signs that have been placed on the railway fence warning people not to fly tip on railway land doesn't state what the penalty would be should you get caught fly tipping on here but seeing as it's a thousand pound fine for being on the railway I should imagine it's rather hefty so it would seem that this has been an ongoing problem for a while using this building basically as a rubbish receptacle which is a shame right then Hot Potters I think we'll move on to the next gem from the old Lancashire Union Railway and it's just down this path here So what Potters, I'm now making my way along this path and hopefully we'll be able to find this next relic Now when I was a kid, all of these ponds that are around here, you've got Oryx's Flash over there you've got the Perchie just at the side of me here and you've got another pond over there there was about eight ponds and you used to be able to fish them all off one fishing permit which cost 50 pence back in the day for a young Mr H. I did have a go at fishing for a short time and then I gave it up I found it a bit boring if I'm being honest but no they've split them all off and you have to pay a separate permit for each and every one of these they're not daft are they you know they're not daft these people who do that but it looks pretty good round here I must admit I mean there's cabins and all sorts around here so they've got it set up pretty good so at least you're getting a little bit for your 50 pence or £10.50 or 50 quid whatever it costs for a fishing permit now again if you come to this particular fishery leave a comment below how much it costs for a permit for a child we'll see if we can compare it to the 1980s and you know the 21st century so to speak with a bit of luck I should be able to cross this railway line in a moment there used to be a crossing point here when it was British Rail back in the day and there used to be a big signal that used to stand there. It was like this big massive box that was about oh, five foot by four foot in size and about nine inch thick. And all it had in it, Hot Potters, was one single 60 watt light bulb. And if that turned red, you wasn't allowed to cross. I don't think that signal will be there anymore. It was prone to vandalism back in the day people with their rifles or just generally making a nuisance of themselves would smash it it must have cost British Rail thousands in 60 watt Osram bulbs so I don't think it'll be there any any longer who knows we might be able to find the remains of that it just sat on a pole if I remember rightly and we should be coming up to the entrance way where we'll be able to cross the line because as I say this little relic should just be on the other side which is near to where Horrocks' flash is, for anybody who knows the area. But it's completely deserted, this fishery today. Probably not fishing season, is it? I know I used to be able to get a lot of perch in this particular pond that I'm walking at the side of, hence the name, really. It's a local name. No doubt if you go on maps, it'll have an official name, but locally, it's known as the Percher. Right then, up Potters. With a bit of luck now, I shouldn't be too far away. And we should be able to cross the line. Safely, of course. It's good to get out on a bit of a bimble, if I'm being honest, Doc Potter. I've not done this for 
a long time. But this morning I dropped little Toby off at preschool and I thought, it's not too bad, let's crack on. Right then, this is where you should or you used to be able to cross the line. Sadly, you can no longer do it. The reason for that hot potters, it would appear, there are gates across. I don't know. How your times have changed. No, sadly, hot potters. There's a big iron gate across this access point now. It used to be open back in the day, but there's a really great padlock on it, and it appears there's gates on the other side, they're blocking it from that side. Then you've got a warning sign warning you not to trespass on the railway, penalty of a thousand pound. So it would appear we've been stopped at this point, Hot Potters. Like I said, back in the day when this was British Rail, this was all open. You know, you could just walk straight across there and get to Oryx's Flash. I don't know. Privatisation has a lot to answer for. Well, Hot Potters, it would appear that we've been stopped. Or have we? I do recall from the old noggin that there is another way over to that side. However, to get to it, Hot Potters, I've got to go along this path underneath the railway that lies behind me here, round the flashes, and it's about an hour to an hour and a half's walk. You get on the canal bank and you come in from that side and walk back along the railway land to this spot here, but over on the other side. So I'll do that, I think, but as I'm pushed for time, because little Toby is at preschool and I'm due to pick him up in an hour or so, I won't have time to go there, get back and all that kind of good stuff. So I think what we'll do, we'll split this video into two and probably next week I'll get down here again, but I'll come in from the other side and we'll see if we can find that other gem. Looking over the railway fence, it does appear to still be there in the bushes, but you never know, you never know. Things do change over time, or they appear to. One little thing I have found is this post here. That used to warn you that he was approaching a railway line back in the day. So all around this area where I am now used to be that signal that I was telling you about, the big box with the light bulb in it. It would have probably been around here where I'm stood now. However, it's long since gone. As I said, all it was was a metal box basically placed on a pole so you'd be very hard pushed to find any remnants or reminders of that particular signal if you are from Springview though and you remember that signal then leave a comment below anyway Hot Potters I'm going to make my way back now to the old jalopy get back to Taylor's Lane Bridge and get in the old jalopy and get ready to pick up little Toby James something I have noticed in this area as I've been walking around that I don't remember from my childhood is there seems to be a lot of litter and a lot of fly tipping and dumping which is a shame they've made it too easy for people to get over here with vehicles and things like that and uh, you know just basically tip the rubbish rather than take it to the tip anyway on that note I'm going to wrap this video up so until the next time from myself Mr H it is bye bye for now